What is going on boys and girls, ladies and gentlemen, the ACMJ's Gamer here. Today we're here to talk about all of the news that has come out regarding Jedi Survivor. Now if you're not aware, um, before these demos came out, that is what prompted the two articles we're going to look at today. Um, there was previous information, I did a whole separate video on it, but if you're not aware about the new game, there are a total of five stances that will be in the game. The single, double-bladed, dual-wheeled, cross-guard, and blaster. The single is a standard, balanced, all-rounder lightsaber option. The double-bladed is good for crowd control and keeping enemies at bay. Dual-wheeled, great for high-octane and versatile combat, requires finesse. The cross-guard, which is powerful but slow. And then blaster, great for dealing with enemies at a distance and pestering foes. Personally, I'll probably end up doing either single and double bladed or single and blaster. Um, I'm not sure if I would be finesse enough for the uh, dual wield and the cross guard. I'm not sure. I mean, you know, I won't know until the game comes out. But those are the five different stances that have been revealed before these demos. And if you're not aware of what I'm talking about, there's a there was a uh, an event at PAX East where a bunch of YouTubers were invited to. Uh, play a demo of the game they got to play for three or four hours. Um, this first article, they say the environments in Survivor are predictably upscale, wider and fuller than ever with all the typical current gin pinprick detail. Um, they say, in my experience, a good two or three hours of gameplay on PC. It felt sturdy enough. The uh, minor tells of the first, uh, in terms of um, uh, issues, I guess the minor issues, of the first like your joy bd not perfectly aligning itself with your shoulder or the tiniest little skid of a character's animation still popping up here and there but that's it no tea breaks all of it reassuringly familiar it's like a general or it's general nature as a game is almost old school idea of a sequel now there are no major subversions no seven year development cycles or paradigm shifts survivor is like fallen order but a bit bigger and a bit nicer to look at the rough edges have been smoothed over and there's a bit of new stuff a lot of new stuff actually, but nothing too threatening perfect. And if you see these images down below, um, there's no video format, but all the colors are unlocked to begin with. If you look at this photo, you can see a version of Cal's, one of the uh, customization of Cal's hair. Um, and then this is also a menu um, at uh, the cantina in one of the first worlds you dropped off at, um, which shows all of the uh, different hairstyles and some jackets you can buy um, other video footage does confirm that there are multiple multiple uh, versions of Cal's hair you can do um, there's a separate uh, I believe thing for um, his beard so his hair and his beard are separate and then um, your undershirt the jacket and the pants are all also separate and each of those have their own various color styles and from my understanding, you can buy these with a currency you unlock in-game. And then um, there are also collectibles that you can get. So in order to make Cal whatever version you want, you're going to need or want to unlock all of the hairstyles to mix and match and see which you think is best. Um, so moving on. Uh, this little town you park yourself in, it's a bit of a hub, like your ship from the first game, evolving with new characters, conversations, and storefronts as you effectively collect them from the wider world, presumably with new places to do all the wonderful, silly things <clears throat> of the first game, like planting seeds and painting droid parts. Uh, right out from here, Cal can now tame animals to ride them as mounts, um, both on land and on air. Although I couldn't do either during my time with Survivor, you'll find familiar spaghetti tangle of overlapping paths. And he's talking about the map there. Um, Survivor's holo map is blissfully somewhat improved from the first. There's a better waypoint system you can manually add from spotting things through BD's visor like in Breath of the Wild. We saw that in the first gameplay trailer, not trailer, the first gameplay that was released, we saw that. Um, dive into those hidden corners and you'll find those good old chests filled with all kinds of wonderful, mysterious rewards from lightsaber parts and fragments of ancient Jedi lore to customizable cosmetics like short beard. You can only have two stances equipped at once with these changeable at specific places like workbenches or meditation points, the From Software inspired version of bonfires that save your progress and respawn defeated enemies and now fast travel points. 
So this is basically a generalization of everything we already know, but these people are talking about it more because they actually played through um, the demo. I don't think... Oh, there was one last part I highlighted. Uh, this game is like we're completing a stem sentence and we're actually turning it into a stanza. It's all the ideas that we had kind of put together in something that's bigger and more robust for the player, and hopefully it feels more refined. And then we have one more article here, I believe. Yeah, this is the beginning of what I wanted to talk about. An intriguing element I barely rubbed up against seems to be base building component of some sort. As you progress the story on Kobo, you unlock a shop and a few other points of interest, along with a hint saying you can come back to this space and expand it over time. Fallen Order had its secrets and optional discoveries, but Survivor stomps on the gas toward, towards Tomb Raider territory. Uh, it isn't quite open world levels of bloat and scavenging, but you can uncover things like rumors that send you on substantial side quests with bespoke dungeon-like challenges. Um, so they were saying in video format in the demos that they would go to the cantina, and if you just chat with random NPCs, um, sometimes they'll be like, hey, I heard a rumor that blah, 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 and you can go and check out that rumor, check out the location, and they um, also said that it feels very rewarding when you go off the beaten path, and that it feels like there's a lot of that in this game, kind of like Skyrim, where you go into a cave and you find out, oh, it's a dwarven ruin, I'm going to be in here for two, two and a half hours, or more. Um, they say, as we've seen with the materials shown up until now, offers a number of stances. We talked about that. You can only have two of them equipped at the same time. Um, each stance has its own skill tree, as well as a basic statistical differences between damage, speed, and pacing brought on, are all brought on by different animations, and they all vary between the stances uh, that can have a huge impact on an individual encounter. Now, something uh, somebody had said in, in a video was that it was not like Ghost of Tsushima in that you had to have a different stance for different enemies. But then he said if you go and up against an enemy and one stance isn't working, well you could go back to a meditation point, switch stances and see how that works. That to me is is backwards. That sounds like Ghost of Tsushima. If you use the single blade and it's not working, go change your stance. That sounds like certain enemies may be taken down easy, easier with specific stances. But, I mean, who knows? If that isn't the case and it's just you can choose whatever stance and you don't have to use a specific one to take down an enemy, it's just you have to be patient and learn how to, you know, fight with a lightsaber. Um, I don't know. We'll see. But thank you guys for watching. That's been um, the update. Um, all over YouTube are currently uh, people's impressions where they got to play for three or four hours. They all enjoyed the game, enjoyed the time. They only wish that, you know, they could have had more time to play it. They can't wait for it to come out. I'm super excited for it. Um, the level of customization and detail, and it just looks like they've improved everything. And it look, sounds like they've... Um, gotten a lot of feedback and implemented that and then some into their sequel so thank you guys for watching uh i'll see you guys next time peace